Hello everybody. So today I'm gonna make some jigs. I'm gonna paint some tungsten jigs to be more specific. Now you're probably thinking, but Mike, you can't paint regular paint on the tungsten jigs that just won't stick. Now normally you'd be absolutely correct. Most of the time you're gonna be dealing with either some kind of lead that's been uh, adhered to a piece of tungsten on a hook or, or, or there's powder in it. A lot of times that lead though, that solder usually even, um, depending on who your manufacturer is or if you've made them yourself, there's tons of stuff that can go into it. There's going to be an issue when it comes to adhering. I highly suggest you properly, number one, properly prep all your jigs before you actually do anything with them. And this includes washing them, uh, cause there's, there's gonna be some kind of release agent. Uh, the, even oils uh, will screw it up. That's the big one that's gonna hit you, cause your paint not to stick. You're just gonna have a bad time and that's life. You know, um, but isopropyl alcohol, that's gonna be one of the best ways to clean your jigs off uh, and, and make sure that they're ready to, to take that paint. But if you use this guy, this guy, you see this guy right here? This is the guy that's gonna make everything okay. He, he's Liam Neeson from Taken. You scrub your bait down with this pad and what that's gonna do for you is it's gonna give you a, a better bond for your primer. Now the primer specifically that you're gonna be using, at least I suggest when you're painting any kind of metal like this, just because of its normal application, uh, is going to be uh, Auto Born Sealer, that's right. This is the black auto born sealer. You can get it in different colors. And if you want a key to key your color uh, or a specific color pattern that you're trying to go after, you can key it in. I like the black just because the black gives you a really strong base to start with. And, but that contrast is a huge part of that. So if you want to make a bright scene brighter, you have to make your background darker. Now this is all well and good, but like I was saying, the most important thing is you're gonna wanna get that paint to actually adhere. We're going to actually be using UV resins. I know, I know we're getting crazy in here, but trust me when I say this, trust me, uh, it's going to be to your benefit. Lots of people will say you can't put clear coats on jigs this small. Uh, you're right, Mo like if you're using an old school lacquer or rattle can, sure, absolutely. With newer technologies and, and the, specifically the UV resins, you're able to work with it a little bit more and get it to spread out a lot more and get pigments to suspend in it as well. That's part of what makes it so vibrant. So that being said, we're going to put them on jigs. We're gonna make this really stand out. You are gonna get some kick. We're gonna get some brightness in these lures. We're gonna get some shine. The form's already gonna be there because it's a teardrop. Uh, and then we're gonna slap some colors down. All right, so this is what we're gonna be using right here. This little guy has made my life so much easier, and it's just a piece of EVA foam. Uh, if you don't know what EVA foam is, it's the stuff that you make uh, the little interlocking mats out of. I use them for camping and ice fishing and all that fun stuff. But the best part about it is you just slide these little guys right in here after making a few little slits with your X-Acto knife. But this guy right here will fit right inside of that guy, just like that. And now you can go ahead and prime a whole bunch of these at once. That's the secret to working in batches. Batches means that you're going to be more proficient with your time. And if you're going to be selling lures, that means that you're going to be more profitable. You're not going to need a ton of this stuff. It's got really good coverage. And the reason why, yeah, see, and that, that's too much. That's already too much. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you really want to lay it on thick, you can. If you want to get down with the thickness, uh, you can do that. But no, really, at the end of the day, this stuff, the reason you're going to be using it is because it's going to stick to metal a lot better than most of the other primers that are out there. So you're just going to lay on a nice light, even coat, just
And you kind of want to get an angle on it too when you're coming in at it so you can get all the nice little spots there and really you're just doing a, a light pass on these at first oh so what we're trying to do here is just get a light light coverage on these uh just something to get the rest of the paint to stick to and we'll come in and clean that up and and get a nice even layer of it down and that's going to give the rest of the paint something to cling on to something else to mention too is uh if you're going to want to get these to kind of dry up a little bit faster you don't want to use heat on this kind of paint you want to just let the air from the brush kind of dry it off that's going to really give you the best result these things can react to heat so just be careful with that um you know using like a blowtorch or a heat gun or anything like that so just be careful all right coming in for pass number two here now you can go a little heavier with this pass. This one's gonna be a medium wet kind of pass so you can really lay on some material here. And this is what's gonna really get your paint to stick. Yeah, that's looking pretty good there. Um, two coats is about generally what I do. You can go three if you want to go hardcore, um, but two coats will be enough to, to really build that up and, and give it a strong foundation for the next couple of layers of paint. Before we even start talking about the uh, the UV resin, we'll get to that. That's, that's a different thing altogether, so bear with. Now you want to make sure you're cleaning this bad boy out too. Just be aware. Sorry about the fan going. You don't want to be spraying this stuff uh, without some kind of uh, airflow going. Uh, have a filter, wear your mask, be safe. This stuff right here, uh, just some generic stuff for now. I use the Better Stuff by Createch or whoever you prefer to kind of get the deep clean at the end of it all. So after you get some of that in there, just do one of these. You can put your finger on here. Don't touch the needle though. You don't want to bend it or anything. It'll screw the whole thing up. But you can just do one of these and pull back a little bit on the lever. There you go. And that's going to help you clean that out a lot faster. All right, now that you're sure that all that primer is out of there, because that's going to affect your colors at the end, go ahead and fill her up with a couple of drops. You might want to throw in a little tiny bit of reducer. Uh, you can do the reducer. I would suggest it, especially if you want to get light, even coats, because that's the name of the game. Uh, you can grab yourself some 4011 reducer. This is kind of like the basic stuff right here. It works like a charm. It does the job. All right. So we're gonna start off with this right here. Give it a good shake, really mix it up. Once you've done that and you're feeling good, good and sassy, a couple of drops. There you go, you don't need much. See, yeah, that's, that's all you're gonna need to cover these little tiny jigs. And you're gonna slap in a little bit of reducer. That was probably way too much, but okay. And then use that same technique. And that's gonna blend it all up. And some tips is always give it a test spray off to the side. You never want to go direct to what you're spray painting. Because if, yeah, see, I had a little bit of cleaner left in there. That would have screwed this whole thing up. So, now that we're going to be spraying actual paint, let's go. Now notice, a key thing with this one you're seeing a lot of that gold right now. That's because that mica is bouncing the light off of these. Uh, the, the pigments are bouncing a lot of light off and that purple color isn't at 100% opacity yet. That's why I like this black is that it gets, you can really see what you're laying down first. That white, this would barely, you'd barely know what you're doing. So this gives you a better perspective. All right, so that's what it's gonna look at, look like at full opacity. Now you can really tell what's going on with it. It's a way different shade. It's 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 looking way different. It's more vibrant, and that's what's really gonna set this off. Now this one, I decided to go full body, top to bottom. The next one I'm gonna do, it's gonna kind of be like a fade from one color to another using the black as the primary base. I just wanted to show you what full coverage looked like. All right. 
right, here comes the fun part. This is when we get this stuff right here. So we got this bad boy in our helping hand. We're gonna get out this UV resin right here. Now, this is part of a series that I do. I call it my Northern Lights set. It's gonna have some hard, hard, hard contrast in it. And you're not gonna need a ton of this stuff. Again, that, that's probably too much already, especially if you're working on these at one at a time. Um, but we're gonna bust out some of that fantastic powder we were talking about. And no, I don't mean the uh, Charlie Sheen kind of fantastic powder. So this one's kind of a an, uh, goldish green. Actually, I'm going to do this solid green right here. This one's going to work the best for what we're trying to achieve here. So if you'll notice here, I, I didn't spray completely. Just that top part is going to be green and that, that underside is really dark. That's how you get the contrast out of this stuff. The contrast is the key for making this kind of effect happen. And you really want to just play around with things. See, as you can see, it's everywhere already. It does not take a lot of this stuff to, to really make an impact. So what I like to do is I just like to start with a tiny little dab of it and see where that gets me. Because you can always add more, you can't take it out. So you'll start to see that in there. Like that would be great right there as just like an, an accent or a highlight to a, a much bigger lure if you're using this as a clear coat. Um, I want just a touch more, just a touch more to really get this to pop. So the cool part is, is once you've dabbed it in there, that UV resin is going to want to pick it up. All right, so it's it's starting to get there. We're starting to get some really serious coverage, and you just really want to see this stuff at an angle. You don't want it to take over. There's a couple of really cool techniques you can do to do that, and, and they look really cool, especially over like a black base or like a really dark color base. But for what we're trying to achieve here, yeah, that's about it. That should be it. So we're gonna take a look and see how that looks on the actual or on the jig itself and we'll go from there all right so we're gonna go ahead and start applying this uh get your uv light ready but keep your clear coat away from it i know it's going to be tricky but you're only going to be putting a little bit of this stuff down at a time and you really want to just kind of build so see with that right there you don't need a ton of this stuff and you just kind of use this uh, applicator to move it around just because these jigs are so small the tiniest amount of this is, is going to affect it and you really don't want to get too low on the jig either because then it'll start going on to the hook and and that's a whole other issue so here we go that's good enough it's it's leveling itself out a bit here and I think that's about all we really need for that first layer. So let's hit it with the UV. So as you can see, it's going to make it a lot easier to use this guy than the big old lamps that you'll probably see for, for like really curing larger batches of this stuff or bigger lures. Uh, that, yeah, I use that. I'm going to bust that out later. Uh, but for now, we just want to get this base started because that's going to make this a lot easier in the long run. Now, if you really want a huge punch, this is a little trick here. Hit it with the UV light for about mm, 30 seconds or so, give or take. Get it to tack up a bit. Come back in here and grab a bit of this. Really just kind of dab it in there. This is going to put some, some high spots on here. And it's, it's going to create a bit of irregularity too. That's part of what makes these pop and stand out. So that's about all you need right there. That's that's really it. That's a lot compared to what was in that clear. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come back over with a little bit more of that clear with this powder in it already just to seal it up. And then we're going to put some eyes on it and we're going to call this bait done.
pro tip, you can also hit your tool with it. That will get it to stiffen up on you. And it will make it a little bit easier to clean up. So you don't get, you know, a gigantic uh, glob going here and you lose your accuracy. Alright, cool. Now we got to pick out some eyes for this bad boy. Let's see what we got here. You know what? I think the green on green is going to look the best. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's take some of these little green guys here. Now the secret to this is do it one side at a time and get it leaning over on itself. So this way you got a nice flat surface and then the adhesion from the actual eyes is going to take over. And you can keep that on there for just long enough. Boom, there you go. So you see how it's, it's on there but it's not like on there, on there. That's normal. Just get it, work it into place. Try not to touch these guys, uh, especially when you you haven't fully cured it. But bust out a, some kind of utility knife or whatever you have, some kind of pokey, pokey bit. But yeah, get that level and flat where you want it. That looks good enough, right? Scoop that up a bit. There we go. Get it facing the right way. So yeah, this eye's a little bit too large, whatever. It's, it's fine. It's not going to hurt anyone. Get a drop. Get this applicator. That's why you want one of these. This is where it gets easy to use. Get a drop of that on there. Um, and then just kind of work it around. Get that surface tension to break. There you go. Just like that. Once you can get that surface tension to break and get it back into position here and, and just kind of work that material around and keep it light and then hit it to lock it in just like that. That's going to make this a heck of a lot easier on you. So just give that a minute or two while you get it to, to hold up. You're not looking 100% cure it. But, but just long enough. And then we're going to do it to the other side. There we go. Just like that. Boom, there it is. Move her around a bit just to get it in place again. Helps if you don't have a wiggly knife. And orientation's important, but not important. It's going to be important to you. Not to the fish, but I like that eye to be orientated properly. Uh, and it's up a little high. So let's just scooch a scooch it back. You know, it's going to move around anyways with the applicator. So let's just... Go ahead and apply some of this go-go juice and break that surface tension and get it on to kind of move that guy around a bit. Yeah, that's nice. That's that's it. That's it. That's nice, nice, nice. All right, that's a lot better position. So now we go ahead and hit it again. And again, this is just to, this isn't the final clear. This is just to kind of lock those eyes into position. So this is the final layer right here. This is the important one. This is the one you want to be nice and thin and get over absolutely everything. Give it a lot of depth. That's, uh, it's really hard to see on these cameras, but, but with that being said, that clear gives it such depth. And, and it's going to make these things last a real long time. Get that clear to, to, to sit over the bait. And, and by doing this a little bit meticulously, you know, you're going to avoid having to put clearing out that hook hanger as well, or the eye hole, the line tie, whatever you want to call it. And you now have a nice even coat over the whole thing. Now, cool part. If you're starting to get a bit of sag in it, like you see there, break that surface tension with some kind of object like this knife. And you're going to be able to pull all that excess off and get that clear coat to be even thinner and more even. And that's the name of the game on this. All right, now we're just going to hit it or get that clear coat to really just sit and settle. And now we're good to go. Then I'm going to finish the other two and we're going to bust out the big light after that and see what they look like.
Well, that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. I, I hope you liked it. I know there was a lot to take in with that, or maybe there wasn't. Maybe it's just a lot for me because I have a hard boiled egg for a brain. I, I hope you found it helpful. Uh, we're gonna keep doing these. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. It's gonna be very important to me. I'm gonna be doing something over here that's gonna be beneficial to you. I'm going to help you when you help me. It's it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. I am going to be giving away some of the lures that I make on this channel. Uh, yeah, we started with tungs and jigs today because realistically that was my bread and butter. That's what I started with and has gotten me to this point. Uh, I got some plans to paint some bigger baits. I've already done a handful of musky baits that I, I really liked with a new style put in a big order for some some crazy nonsense and it's it's uh, i'm gonna rock your socks let me trust me trust me i want to give back as you guys give i'm gonna be running a like sub what have you some shape or form essentially the goal is if we can get 10 likes on this video that's a point for the next video there are 10 likes that's a point because that's the goal that's the like goal uh if we get enough likes in a row, we're gonna set the goal for 10 and 10, why not? 10 likes on the next 10 videos, I'll do a giveaway. And then when we get to a thousand subscribers, I know that's a long goal away, but that's the big goal. That's where I need to be uh, to, to continue to do this and continue to put these videos together. At a thousand goals, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be working on getting a uh, fly box or an ice jig box put together with some of those tungsten jigs. So not just one's gonna be headed your way, but one of the lucky 1,000 subscribers uh, will be a recipient of that uh, as a way for me to give back. And then after that, you know, we'll keep setting big goals and we'll keep sending out baits. I, I, I really, really think it's gonna be awesome uh, for when you guys really give it your all and, and tell me what you wanna see and what you like and what you want me to paint. And, and I can give back by, you know, giving you the lures that you wanted me to paint. It's pretty simple, right? That all being said, I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, it's going to mean a lot to me as we move forward. And uh, this is something that I'm, I'm really happy to do. And I'm really excited to see the future of. Uh, check out NorthernTackle.com. Northern with a D-E-R-N at the end. Go to the website. Instagram is going to be where you're going to see the coolest stuff that I put out. Also, I got a Facebook page. Check that out as well for updates. Uh, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Most importantly, fish more and get on the water.